Hey everyone, it's John here, Sub-Zero Gaming. It's been quite a while since my last YouTube series, uh, so I thought I'd kick back into it with a class inheritance video. I get a lot of questions about Get Component and how to access one object from another, um, so that's what we're going to cover today. Uh, one thing to know before we begin is that Unity is a component-based design, and that's really important to know. Um, you see here on this player game object I have here that I have a transform component, a cube mesh photo component, a box collider component, and a mesh render component. And then I have my script attached, which is a player component. Unity doesn't see this as a class or a script. Unity sees it as another component. So that's important because in order for class inheritance to work, we use a method called getComponent. And if I go to the scripting reference for getComponent, you'll see here um, that it says returns the component of type type if the game object has one attached. So in this example, they're saying public hinge joint hinge, which hinge joint is a component, and then they're giving it like a name. How do you want to access information on that component? Then they're saying hinge equals get component, and then the type of component they're looking for, which is the hinge joint. And we're going to go over a bunch of exercises, and I have a really cool um, little lesson packet that I, if you will, that I created that you're going to download and you'll be able to walk through a bunch of different exercises. Um, but basically, and you can see it's just another example down here, um, but basically, look at this scenario. In Unity, if I'm on game object A and I need a script off game object B, how would I go about grabbing the component I need? Uh, and that's the most common question I get. So in Unity, we use get component to grab components off of game objects. So get component allows us to grab specified components and in return lets us read information from that component and or change the information and reassign it. So looking at this example, it may make sense that if I'm on object A and I need a component of object B, I could just say get component and then the component I want, right? Well, not quite. Um, this is because when you just type get component, you're, you're getting components off of the game object that this script is attached to. So for their example, this script is attached to, say, game object A. And if you want the hinge joint off of game object B, you can't just say get component hinge joint, because then you're getting the component hinge joint off of the game object this script is attached to, and you don't want that. You want the game you want the component off of game object B, which is hinge joint. And like I said, guys, it's okay if you don't understand it right now. Um, I'm gonna make it really simple. Uh, and let, let's just go over it again. So basically, in order to find, in order to get a component off of game object B, you first have to find game object B. Unity works in a very hierarchy order, now or hierarchy structure. So what does that mean? Um, if I'm on the main camera and I have a GUI class, okay, I have a GUI manager class here, and I need to access this class, my player class, from my player game object. How can I do that? Well, first thing first is I have to find that game object. So I need to find the player, and then I can do get component of the player class. So it's a very hierarchy structure. Uh, if I just type get component player, there is no player class component on my main camera that I'm trying to access from. Um, so that's the difference between that. So what we're going to do today is this is going to be the final result. You're going to receive a package that you're going to download, and you're going to open it up. It's going to look just like this. The only difference is that yours, you're going to fill in the information yourself, and I'm going to walk through it with you. But ideally, this is the final result. I have one GUI manager class here, and I'm accessing every single one of these scripts to return information. And the final result will look like this. We're going to create a bunch of different variables, and we're going to pull information from different classes. So for instance, I have a name. I put my name. I pulled my name. I extracted my name from the name class, which is right here. I have my sex, which is male. I extracted that from my ASL. I have a location, also extracted from ASL. Um, my health is extracted from the player class. My score is extracted from the player class. My location, as well, is also from ASL. And then I have in child object equals true, which is this child class here. This is going to be the final result, and you're going to get a ton of practice with different ways to do get component. So looking at the scripting reference, let's look at a different way to read what we were looking at. What is this right here? Why is this important? I consider this kind of like a handle. And I usually make them private because I don't need to see them public. So what I do is I create a private handle. And a private handle tells me what component I'm looking for. So in this example, pretend this is private. It's private. You're looking for the component hinge joint. And then you give it a reference name. How do you want to access the information inside hinge joint? So you type hinge. 
Then what you do is you assign that handle to the actual component. If you have to find the game object, you need to do that first and then get the component. Um, and you use get component it must be assigned to a variable, and the variable it's assigned to is your handle variable, which is here. So let's go ahead and look at an example. Um, this is what we're going to complete, and now what we're going to do is I'm going to actually walk you through the setup of your project. Okay, so in the description below, there's a download link to a Unity asset. Go ahead and download that, and what you're going to do is you're going to open up a new project, blank scene, just go ahead and create it. Don't import anything, just keep it defaults for 3D. All right, a new project's gonna be built, and you're gonna have this asset folder that you're downloading called Lesson Get Component. Go ahead and double click it, and this little box will pop up. You wanna import that. All right, and go ahead and click on the Lessons asset in the project view, and we'll go ahead and run the game. And you'll see here that the information is blank. So name, age, sex, location, health, score, and in-child game object are all blank. We need to assign information to them using class inheritance. And if you look in the GUI manager, I've given you those labels. All I'm doing is just creating labels. All right, nothing new here, nothing exciting. Um, so what we need to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the first one for you. And uh, this is the name. All right, so we need to find... Hey, guys, sorry. Um... QuickTime is crashing like crazy right now whenever I have Mono develop in the screen. So I'm going to just basically go over the two required things you have to do and then leave you from there. Um, basically, I'm not going to do the name one because the name one is attached to this. So it's easy enough just to say get component. What I want to do is I want to get the age value. So when I run the game, it's going to display my age next to the age variable that I have set up or age label. So the age is inside of my ASL script. The ASL script is attached to the ASL game object, and you can see here that it's a component. So if I'm on the main camera in GUI Manager, how do I get to this ASL component so that I can access the age, sex, and location? I first have to find this game object. So what I would do is in my GUI Manager script, I would have to create a private handle, all right, and a private handle to the component that I want, okay? And a private handle is just private, and then the component you want, which is what? For this example, it's ASL, and then you give it a reference name, and I'm just going to do underscore ASL. So now there's my private handle. All right, private handle, done. In void start, you have to initialize it. So what I'm going to do is I have to take my private handle, which is ASL, and I need to assign it to the component. And again, I can't just do get component because it's not attached to the main camera. Um, you have to first find the game object and to find a game object. It's really really simple You just type game object capital G capital O and then dot find With a capital F and you'll see that you have a tool tip that would pop up if you're on mono develop or visual studios And it will say string name and that string name is just the name of the game object in unity for me and for you It's ASL now what you've done is you assign that handle to the game object once you're on that game object, what do you want to do? You want to type dot, and then you want to get the component that you want from that game object. So you say get component, and then you open up your triangle brackets, T brackets, and you in here you put the component that you want. You specify which component you want to grab. For us, it is ASL. And then you initialize it. And now we can go down to our label, and we can say plus underscore ASL, and you'll receive a drop down of everything that you can access for that component. And you'll see in there your age, your location, as well as the sex. So it's pretty simple. So for the age one, you would say ASL.age, and that's how class inheritance works. Very, very simple. Uh, sorry I couldn't finish this in Model Develop, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I'm looking forward to developing more interactive content for you. Uh, if you have any problems, post comments. If you like it, post comments. Uh, if you hate it, go watch a different video. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Looking forward to more content. Bye.